like to give time to Honorable Siri or to Sri Lankan to initiate the discussion. Honorable Speaker, sir, I rise to participate to initiate a discussion on the issue of Energy Act 1989, for which I would like to thank our Honorable Speaker for giving us the privilege to discuss this subject under the matters of public importance under Rule 50. Honorable Speaker, sir, the NLTB Act 1989, which had come into force in 1990, with the high expectation of bringing about the social change and a peaceful environment, but unfortunately, the success of the NLTB Act 1989 has been widely deemed impaired, despite of more than three decades of enforcement due to many underlying factors that undermine the, to achieve the intended objectives, such as lack of awareness, campaign and dissemination of adverse effect on consumption of alcohol, lack of providing alternative sources of income to the traditional local rules. One of the major impediments on the effective implementation of the Act is the porous order of Nagaland that shares with Assam 512 10 kilometers, which made it impossible to be guarded against smuggling by any law enforcement agencies, be it Nagaland police or the excise personnel of the state. Besides, there are not less than 19 bonded warehouses and distilleries in the bordering state of Assam. Taking advantage of its proximity with Dimapo, township like Lahorijan, Katkati, Assam have based the economy on liquor supply to the state. Effective enforcement of the Act is not possible with meager 336 Nagaland excise personnel for the entire state coupled with outdated firearms such as 303 rifles and shortage of motor vehicles for mobility. Now I would like to highlight the negative consequences of the NLD Act 1989. Number one, mushrooming of illegal bootleggers and formation of syndicate to ever rising demand of the market. Number two, the spirit and inferior quality of alcohol which flooded the market that is causing serious health hazard, leading to untimely death amongst the Naga youth and also under the color users. It is plain to see for everyone hundreds of legal outlets in and around Dimapur and Kohima alone have flourished in the guise of <coughs> soft drink corners. These outlets are operating openly without fear of the law enforcement and public outrage. To this issue, hitherto, no civil society or organization have come forward to point fingers or raise questions. Honorable Speaker, sir, other effects, other negative impact, such as Diversion to deadlier substitutions. Many a youth has been has taken recourse to other substitutes like drugs and narcotics in the absence of alcohol. The diversion of to deadlier alternative has the potential to wipe out the whole generation if left unaddressed. The alarming rise in the abuse of drugs, such as sunflower is prevalent in rampant scale among the younger generation today. This is a disturbing trend emerging in our society, which is perilous and will have serious consequences for the younger generation in the future. The rise in AIDS incidence 
despite in the instance of AIDS in Nagaland, prevalence rate as per the data is 0.76% among adults. Third largest in the country is a direct result of legal being confined to the dark fringes of our society. All along the border vicinity of Assam Nagaland, there are numerous legal joints which promote promiscuity and the recent phenomena in the rise of the number of local cold curls threatened to eat into the very fabric of our social setup. Unemployment scenario in the state amidst the financial constraint, unemployment rate is <coughs> all time high, which can only accentuate with the yearly influx of fresh graduates, as there are no other avenues in the absence of private sector participation. In this scenario, the state needs to capitalize on whatever available means of employment generated mechanism to develop its human resources and its infrastructure. Adverse effects on the sector of the economy. Sectors like tourism, hotel, industry, hospitality sector, and horticulture are some of the ancillary industries that have been badly affected due to the prohibition law, which has unfortunately stifled the growth potentials of this income and employment generating sector. These industries will greatly benefit from a regime change. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, sir, a revisit to the end of the debate 1989 will be an important step in this direction. I assure you in the event of any amendment of the end of the debate Act 1989, the Department shall intensify the enforcement of the NLDP Act 1989 in such a manner that weekly, Friday, Sundays, all state and national holidays shall be strictly enforced. Timing regulation and retail store business hours shall be maintained. Regulated timing of bars, retros, lounges where license is issued. Maximum age bar for the consumer shall be to be one year and above and many other rate restricted. Give fit shall be enforced by the department. Other stringent clauses and penalties and violation of the government notified stipulation. With this submission, I would invite all our honorable men, uh, members to have a serious discussion deliberation. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, sir. I raise to participate in the discussion of matter of urgent public importance under Rule 50, issue pertaining to health hazards of spurious liquor. Honorable Speaker, sir, for more than 30 years, the NLTP Act 1989, which came to effect in 1999 has been in force <coughs> as a di direct result of the effectiveness which is happening today. The police, the excise, and the concerned departments have tried their best, and the result of its assertiveness towards enforcing this by the concerned departments have raised to more bootleggers and resorting to spurious liquor in all forms all over the state and which is completely ruining the health of especially young people all over the state. Needless to speak, and much ado about the NLTP Act 1989 being able to be enforced in our state, there are many things 
and many people voicing out. As I was looking in the newspaper today morning and pondering on how to go about speaking in your August leadership and in the presence of the August members, I came about in the newspaper in the Nagaland Post and I thought this would be best. I read out a little bit and to be pondered upon by all the people. In the page uh, six, Honorable Speaker sir, I assure you, I have not asked them to write this today morning. And they have, I believe, responsible citizens who have written this by one Mr. Dr. Kahuka Sema. Family Health Clinic Hospital, Dimapu. I'll just read it out fast. Observation on NLTP Act 1989. Nagaland has been a dry state since 1989 following the enactment of the Nagaland Liquor Total Prohibition, NLTP Act, which was passed under pressure from churches, NMA, and the civil societies due to rising social issues related to alcohol abuse. Over three decades later, discussions about lifting, revisiting the NLTP Act have been tabled to be discussed in the upcoming assembly session. His opinion on the potential outcome of the situation following the decision in the assembly can be anyone as below. That is the writer's uh, presumption. Lifting the prohibition. The State Assembly may pass a bill to lift the prohibition. This could lead to protests from churches and others. However, the government might ultimately succeed in implementing the change. He has a wonderful perception. Status quo maintain the act may not be lifted, resulting in continued partial restrictions as it is now. This scenario could be embarrassing for all. The people may lose more faith in the church as well as in the government, although this may not be a new thing. It has been going on for the past more than 30 years. Strengthened enforcement. The act might remain in place with intensified enforcement, although this may remain for some time only. This could lead to an increase in the sale of spirits liquor exacerbating health issues and economic costs due to restricted sales. The situation will be far worse than the very reason why the act was enacted in the first place. We can expect our own version of Hooch tragedy and an increase in mortality and morbidity from alcohol use disorders. The writer says, I personally favor the NLTP Act to continue. However, if prohibition is lifted, there may not be significant increase in the alcohol-related health issues. On the contrary, alcohol users may benefit as spirits liquor consumption will be decreased significantly. In such a scenario, the church can continue to play a significant role in addressing alcohol-related problems within a community through various strategies and initiatives like education and awareness workshop and seminars for church leaders as well as for its congregation. Integration of spiritual and psychological approaches through counseling will have a significant impact on those seeking spiritual healing alongside recovery. I believe that the best counselor to deal with a person with alcohol-related disorder is a trained counselor with a spiritual background. After all, the time a person repents is often when the person is physically and spiritually at their lows. Dr. Kahu Kasema, Family Health Clinic Hospital, Dimapo. And a little bit on the liquor prohibition, let government decide what is best. By Mr. Alon Mumpumer, former editor, the Morong Express. And the end of his paragraph, he writes, interestingly, 
the church, while asserting that revisiting the NLTP Act was not the solution, has instead advised the government that the focus should be on increasing transparency and accountability in governance. I believe this advisory is equally applicable to the church in Maryland. Both should take steps to cleanse the corrupt system from within, including the problem of illegal black money. Lastly, if at all the NLTB Act is lifted, partially or fully, the public should demand that a specific provision is inserted to the proposed amendment where it is clearly mentioned as to how and where the revenue collected will be used for a special purpose vehicle, SPV, may be created under an appropriate authority to use the revenue for specific sector like health, education, and road infrastructure. Honorable Speaker, sir, out of the many that comes out in the paper and in social media, out of the many opinions generated, some totally banning it, taking into moral consideration, some saying that a responsible uh, state with responsible people, youngsters in the new generation, the 22nd generation coming up, where responsible drinking is also part and parcel of a social structure and community. Under Article 50, Rule 50, sir, you have uh, considered to receive this notice and bring into discussion. And yesterday, as the cabinet was speaking with the, all our members of the opposition government, you know, I was very much uh, excited to know the fact that the Honorable Chief Minister of Nagaland, our leader, and you, our Honorable Speaker, have decided to admit this to discuss and discourse on this help as heads of spirit leader. Before it has been admitted to consider for any kind of amendment or not, which is not possible, according to our learned leader, uh, Uncle Ling Kong in China, it is to discuss and discourse on these health hazards and all these problems that have been created in various ways touching various strata of our society. I believe that Honorable Chief Minister and your leadership has brought about a time where all Nagas of Nagaland, all the citizens have to hear out and then come to a conclusive uh, idea where the best for our people can be met out. I would like to also request all opinions in the society, all opinions in the community and in the organizations to be able to come forward to discuss and discourse. Until and unless we do that, just threatening each other or talking from the back door and side door and throwing stones at each other will never be able to mitigate the actual need and the aspiration of our people. No man is more learned than anyone else other than when we come together and seek to discuss and discourse for the growth and prosperity of our people in every way. And such is an issue of the uh, Nagaland Liquor Total Prohibition Act 1989 Times have changed. 30 years plus have gone by. It is time that we give uh, resonating uh, problems which are affecting our society to be <coughs> discussed and discoursed. And the government of the day, under the Honorable Chief Minister and all of you, have to take a decisive decision, knowing very well both the implications, the pros and the cons, of this NLTB Act, which is going on today. Lastly, I would like to conclude by just saying that no country or no state, any will call it as a sarcasm, but which have put total liquor prohibition has ever been able to effectively go ahead with it. There are always the bootleggers who benefit out of it in the greatest manner. 
we hope that even after this discussion and discourse on the NLTB Act 1989, we hope that the bootleggers of Nagaland are not the winners. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, sir. Thank you so much uh, for giving us the time. And also, under Rule 50, we have put our submissions. So I thank you all and two other honorable members also. Under Rule 50, the discussion on spurious illegal and its effects, hazards, we are here not to make an amendment, neither can we put a resolution on this. So I thank you for putting up this matter of public concern, which should be a matter of discussion. My fear for public nouns do not allow me to use certain nouns, but the debate, the crusade against this chemical in the form of spirit has been there before us. I, for one, the younger generation, we have our own ideals, and I know, especially for the older generation, 30 years is a long time. I also represent a constitution, a constituency where we have the highest church density, that is the Northern Angami, and I'm also proud or not proud to say that we have the highest density of bootlegger shops. The lifting of prohibition, I believe, will not increase the existing flow of liquor in my area. Given our geographical challenges, there are pockets where liquors are flowing up and down. And, of course, when you hold the bottle, when you hold the spirit, there is already a consumer advisory that it is injurious to health. We did not mention the state regulates certain food items, certain food choices for the public, and accordingly it is put into the market, alcohol being one. And therefore, whether we should openly or not openly, I think uh, it's a matter of discussion, there are two thoughts here. One is, we need to deal with the public society, we need to deal with civil society, the right and stakeholders, discuss with them, because there is a common feeling that lifting of prohibition is going to create anarchy. It will bring us lesser away from our God. It will bring a lot of disharmony. We all know the ill effects of drinking, smoking. That is nothing to say. But here we are talking about the presence of spurious liquor because there has been no regulation in the flow of liquor into our state. And therefore, today the discussion here is we are elected by the public, we are, and we cannot afford to go against the public. And therefore, the other school of thought is, do we discuss with them or we do not? For those who feel that we should discuss with them, that is what we are playing our role as public leaders. For those who do not feel that we should discuss with them, the fear is that it will be like the frog inviting the snack for his birthday party. No civilizations have been destroyed by booze or liquor. There is no as such history like that. As a younger generation, I would like to impress upon everybody that the color of food has got nothing to do with eating. Food culture has got nothing to do with culture or civilization. Today we are demonizing liquor and I think this tastes very bad for a young society for the younger generation. The rule of law must be applied. There should be respect for law. There should be respect for rule of law. At this rate, there may be anti-Christian movement, given the crusade. There will be total anarchy. So the patrimony of the white man's burden, which we have inherited, is what we see today. And therefore, for us to educate our people, I think we need to work together Today, the locus standi of certain section of society is based on the belief that individual liberty must be controlled in the interest of the public welfare. And here, I would like to also mention that personal liberty should not be allowed to mitigate or upsurge the interest of the community as a whole. And here, today, I must bring to your notice, when we fly over the Sharia states of the Arab world where liquor drinking is prohibited. The aeroplane flying over these countries do not serve alcohol. 
till we cross their border lines. Have we applied that same principle as a prohibition state? Because in the middle of the night, so many international flights are crossing over Nagaland. Shall we put rules that they should not be serving liquor? So to bring to the point here, and I'll end here, the idea of demonizing liquor, it's bad state. It's bad for the younger generation. The kind of multi-core buildings which exist in even the poorest of the poorest villages, and the kind of Sharia laws, the kind of fanaticism which is driving us against the demonization of a particular food. I think these are personal choices. We need to also know that the prohibition individual liberty has been heard in the past. We cannot afford to go back to the medieval age or apply rules of medieval legislations because we definitely, as my colleague Nalong has said, we are the 22nd generation, 22nd century generation, and our children should be taught that there cannot be anarchy, there cannot be, uh, what do we call, uh, there has to be respect for rule of law, and there is nothing wrong in drinking. That is what I can bring to your notice, honorable speaker, sir. Thank you. Honorable speaker, sir. I thank you so much for giving me this time to participate in the discussion on matters of urgent public importance under Rule 15 on health hazards of spurious liquor in line with the Nagaland Liquor Total Prohibition NLTP Act 1989. <laughs> Honorable Speaker, sir, I take this privilege to express my profound gratitude to our Almighty God and giving Him all glory and honor for His faithfulness, His unfailing love and guidance. I must also thank the church leaders, especially NBCC leaders of the bygone days, who gave their hearts and soul to salvage our society when they saw the consumption of alcohol was destroying our society, which come, which some of the younger legislators like me have not seen in full. Nevertheless, we have all been adversely affected by it in one form or the other way. It adversely affects individuals, families, and the society as a whole. It drains away our resources, our economy, the marriages, our talents, destroys our relationship, and many, many more. See in this situation, our churches, backed by the civil society organizations, spearheaded the movement and brought the Nagaland Legislative Liquor Total Prohibition Act 1989, in which there may be some shortcomings in the Act and also failures in the implementation. However, I consider the passing of this NLTP Act as a great achievement and a great blessing to all of us. Therefore, I thank those leaders who have listened to the voice of the church and the civil society organizations for making the movement a success. We must also thank our honorable chief minister, Nipi Rio, for his tall leadership, his deep understanding of the sentiments and the voices of our churches. Despite facing difficult situation many times when it comes to the NLTP Act. Honorable Speaker, sir, if you look at the positive aspect of the NLTP Act, the prohibition reflects the image of Nagaland as a land of Christianity and Nagaland for Christ which we all must cherish 
up, uphold and strengthen it as a Christian and as a people of God. Honorable sir, I as a representative of my constituency in particular and my Chagasan tribe in general would like to make say that with confidence that we will continue to pray and support for strengthening this law. Honorable Speaker, sir, I also like to make a mention in five perspective here. From the biblical point of view, wine is a, is a mocker, strong drink is a broader, and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. Proverbs 21. Drunkenness is abominable and a curse from God as it contradicts the righteous nature of God. Liquor has many ill effects on human life. So indulging in it is against Christian principles of upright living. If you look at the Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, 10, and 11, it is made clear that the Bible is against drunkenness. Number two, moral perspective. Consumption of alcohol, liquor, leads to drunkenness, which destroys morality and integrity of a person. Consumption of liquor has never and will never boost a personal morality. A moral person is always a sober person. Indulgence in the wine or liquor damages one's integrity because there's nothing as such <coughs> responsible drunkenness. They even compromise the societal moral standard of right and wrong, good and bad. From a health perspective, liquor is health hazardous, as we already mentioned in our topic. And this, and it, whether it is spirits liquor or non-spirits liquor, it is hazardous and it destroys our body and which is ab abomination to God as we are created in the image of God. Although health is an individual concern, it also affects the overall health of an individual, communities and the state in general. Good legend, business, sports liquor, etc. are few points which people argue with, but it will be, it will remain a challenge in reality, whether we ban it or we open it. The only way forward to overcome this health issues, sports issues, is to strengthen the, the law which is in our hand. We find it difficult to control, even with the law in our hand, it will be more disastrous if we give more rooms on the ground of health, booklating, spirits, or any other excuses. From the financial perspective, sir, lifting of the egg will enable us to generate some revenue of few hundreds crores. But expenditure on consumption of liquor, healthcare services, etc., will drain out more than what we earn. No one has saved money by drinking. Instead, many people have become bankrupt just become because of drinking happy, as we all know. From the social point of view, alcohol consumption disturbs the very fabric of a family, a personal relationship, one of the main causes of broken families in Naga society is consumption of alcohol. Liquor has not 
only affected families, but brought social chaos and shame. Honorable Speaker, sir, as we all know that NLTP Act of 1989 has been instrumental in fostering healthier, safer, and more cohesive atmosphere in Nagaland. Despite its challenges and limitations, including enforcement issues and the potential of bootleading business, flow of sporous liquors, the potential harm of repealing the edge appears to outweigh any perceived benefits. The social and moral consequences of increased alcohol consumption, erosion of cultural values, and a strain of family structures must be carefully considered before thinking of altering the adult to be at. Unless we take a decision to strengthen it, it will be a time is very not very far for us to call ourselves as Christians. Honorable Speaker, sir, as our state navigates these broader dilemmas, it is essential to prioritize the well-being of individuals and families more than anything else, as money and development will have no value when our citizens are destroyed. Therefore, let us commit ourselves to freeing our homes, streets, market offices, our workplaces, villages, and our towns from the evils of liquor and project ourselves as a Christian state to the rest of the world so that God will continue to bless us, God will bless our leadership, and God will bless our state. With these few words, I want to conclude. Thank you, sir.